Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Lord, make us have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name, for you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Isaiah. I was ready to be sought out by those who did not ask, to be found by those who did not seek me. I said, here I am, here I am, to a nation that did not call on my name. I held out my hands all day long to a rebellious people who walk in a way that is not good, following their own devices. A people who provoke me to my face continually sacrificing in gardens and offering incense on bricks, who sit inside tombs and spend the night in secret places, who eat swine's flesh with broth of abominable things in their vessels, who say, keep to yourself, do not come near me, for I am too holy for you. These are a smoke in my nostrils, a fire that burns all day long. See, it is written before me, I will not keep silent, but I will repay. I will indeed repay into their laps their iniquities and their ancestors' iniquities together, says the Lord, because they offered incense on the mountains and reviled me on the hills. I will measure into their laps full payment for their actions. Thus says the Lord, as the wine is found in the cluster, and they say, do not destroy it, for there is a blessing in it. So I will do for my servants' sake and not destroy them all. I will bring forth descendants from Jacob and from Judah, inheritors of my mountains. My chosen shall inherit it, and my servants shall settle there. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's read together Psalm 22, found in your bulletin. Be not far away, O Lord. You are my strength. Hasten to help me. Save me from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, my wretched body from the horns of wild bulls. I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. 
Praise the Lord, you that fear him. Stand in awe of him, O offspring of Israel. All you of Jacob's line, give glory. For he does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty, neither does he hide his face from them. But when they cry to him, he hears them. My praise of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall bow before him. For kingship belongs to the Lord, he rules over the nations. The second reading this morning is a reading from the letter to the Galatians. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore, the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian, for in Christ Jesus you are all children of God through faith. As many of you were baptized into Christ, have clothed yourself with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring heirs according to the promise. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus and his disciples arrived at the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. As Jesus stepped out on land, a man of the city who had demons met him. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he did not live in a house but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, 
What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, what is your name? He said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. Now there on the hillside, a large herd of swine was feeding, and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swine herds saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came out to see what had happened, and when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him, but Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. So as a young curate, uh, one of my duties was to lead Bible studies on Wednesday mornings. We would all sit around a large wooden table, dwelling on the word, reading it out loud, carefully, line by line. Uh, We moved slowly through a few books while I was with them. And you know what? I can still hear their voices. I can hear their voices because we took that time together. I can hear their wonderings, their delight, their questions and their frustrations, especially when it came to certain texts. Today's reading has me remembering my friend Barbara and her deep concern with the lives of hogs. The truth is, is that each of us brings a little something to the scripture uh, when we encounter it. Barbara often brought her love of animals to the text and was sensitive to the ways uh, that they were treated in the stories that came before us. Barbara's question that day followed the sentiments of many in the group who said, I never understood this. And then asked, why did the pigs have to die? Couldn't Jesus have just banished the demons into the abyss without sending them into the animals? Why allow something to die that is innocent? What did the pigs ever do to anyone? Her questions are poignant, especially when considering the recent tragedies in the past couple of weeks. For the death of innocent beings in supermarkets, schools, and now churches has cast a long shadow over our lives as of late. Those lives are very much bound up with us in worship today 
as we continue to remember each of their souls before God, lamenting their death just as sure as we are becoming more acutely aware of how, if left unchecked, the suffering of innocent beings will affect the trust that we place in each other and our surroundings. That, let alone how we can figure how God factors into that awareness when even in God's house, innocence remains subjective at gunpoint. I will never understand the motive at work in someone's heart that says to them that these 30 children shall serve as a sacrifice or the fisher that must be present in one's soul to sit down at supper with someone and decide that that night will be the night that those that they have supped with will be their last. Everything in my being wishes to banish them, banish such images, I should say, to the graveyard where they belong. Such images, I must confess, have me thinking that Molech is alive and well, demanding reparations for having been sent into those pigs so long ago. And then, noticing that the parallels in the ancient hog trade reflect those of our own, especially when the price of inflation cost the community their livelihoods, when the Gentile swineherds reported to the village that one of their main food sources had just been swept away at the hand of a Jew. Fear paralyzed that community despite what was at work in Jesus. And Jesus left after having been asked to by those who learned the hard way that coming close to Jesus in that moment meant coming close to the cost of things. Despite the fact that one who was once lost was now found, despite the fact that one who was banished, left to howl among the tombstones, had just returned to them in his right mind, despite the fact that banishment and trusting in what the world tells you will save you oftentimes has more to do with losing our bacon than saving it. I could see that Barbara was not satisfied in the direction that the conversation was taking that morning so long ago. And so I did the only thing I could do in that moment. I told them about the time that I had met the man in the graveyard. He was a large man, as you might suspect, with a full head of salt and pepper hair and a wiry beard to match. Deep red ruts under his eyes told the tale of many nights weeping instead of sleeping. And the incessant scratching told me of a body starved of what was used to numb him from his circumstances. It was my job as the chaplain's assistant to meet him that day and go over some of the requests he made for spiritual support during his intake. You must be my son's age, he said. I told him I was 35, and for the next 90 minutes, I listened to his story. The Redwood Unit housed patients experiencing co-occurring mental illness with substance abuse addiction. This was the patient's third time in Redwood after having been stabilized and then sent back out into the streets, which as I learned through the, that interview, might as well have been a graveyard given the fact that swine herds were in short supply and that it was easier to get high than it was to pick oneself up by one's own bootstraps. But you know, he said something to me that day that I'll never forget. When speaking of this frequency of his visits, he mentioned to me that this time would be his last. It's now or never, he said. 
probing to see if he had any suicidal ideations, he told me that there was one thing in his life that was left to him worth living for. And that was his grandson. He would do what he must, or he would die trying. And with that, he stood up with purpose, a purpose so clear that come hell or high water, I knew in that moment that love would find a way. As it was, however, I never found out if he was reunited with his grandson. I left that position before he was released. But I like to think that he did. I like to think of their reunion, especially on days like last Thursdays, on days when the suffering of both those who are innocent and those who are not meet in the vegetable aisle, sitting at their desks or across at the table with one another at a potluck. In the face of those tragedies, I like to think of a grandfather and a grandson reuniting against the odds when in our world it seems that there is nothing or no one that can help those under the thumb of addiction sometimes or that some think that what we owe our own demons is someone's life because it satiates one's anger at one's own woundedness. I like to think of those two embracing each other, of the way that Jesus, in my mind, embraces those who have been slain, reassuring them that though weeping may carry the night, joy will come in them, joy will come for them in the morning. What is true, I think, is that there is really no clear way out of this mess, my friends until we hear the voices of all those who have been slain calling to us. For out of the depths they do, I assure you, they do with Jesus, and along with their, with them and our God, they shall redeem us from all our sins if we have the courage to listen in spite of being haunted by what we hear. Please stand. And turning to page eight, let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, a light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Beloved in Christ, 
St. Paul reminds us that there is no longer slave or free, there is no longer male or female, for all of us are one in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore pray as one body, saying, we put our trust in you, O God. Hear us, answer us, and send us forth. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity. I, I know we love right one in this church, <laughs> and it's so good, it's so good. We're going to do right one one of these days, folks. Okay, let me start again. Yes. Beloved in Christ, St. Paul reminds, oh, he already read that. Let's go to the next. Okay, send out your light and your truth that they may lead your people into the joy and gladness we experience at your altar. Send us out to shine our light and share in your joy. We put our trust in you, O God. Hear us, answer us, and send us forth. God, in you is our strength and hope. Remember those who feel forgotten. Be the salvation of all who are being oppressed. May we join you in liberating them. Defend the cause of the innocent. Deliver the world from the ways of the wicked. We put our trust in you, O God. Hear us answer us and send us forth you O lord grant your loving kindness in the daytime the night is filled with your songs we thank you for blessing your creation with your presence in all times and in all seasons we put our trust in you O god hear us answer us and send us forth lord jesus break the chains of those held in bondage restore those forgotten by society May all prisoners and captives, by the power of your love and mercy, have their dignity renewed. We put our trust in you, O God. Hear us, answer us, and send us forth. We pray for those weighed down by heavy souls. We pray for those who feel like they are in over their heads, for the disquieted, and for those who are ill, especially Linda and Terry, Liz, Michelle, Catherine, Sydney and Ed, David, Chris, Amber, Ben, Sanibar, Diana, Charlie, Cindy and Tom, Joel, Stacy and Butch, Steve, Peter, Tom, Josh, Katie, Debbie, Linda, Aurora, Janice, David, Norma, Barbara, Margaret, and Rosemary. We put our trust in you, O oh God. Hear us, answer us, and send us forth. O oh God, in Christ Jesus, you have made us your children. We pray for the dying and for those that we love and see no longer. Bring them into the joys of heaven. We put our trust in you, O oh God. Hear us, answer us, and send us forth. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Now, my friends, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. 
Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. My friends, please stand, and may the peace of the Lord be always with you. If some. to see everyone. If I could have you take your seats. I don't really have a whole lot of announcements uh, today, which is, which is, is what it is. Um, what I, what I did want to take some time to do is uh, just to, to let you know uh, about a few people on our, on our prayer list. Um, I think I heard this week that uh, Charlie Lee came back to men's group right? As you remember, Charlie broke his, his leg, right? Arm? Arm. Earlier, uh, uh, earlier this year, went to, went to the hospital, then went to rehab, got COVID, right? And then, you know, recovered in rehab, and it was home, and, and now he made his way back so that the guys can hear about two-headed goats and all the stuff that goes along with that. Um, if you haven't been to men's group, I assure you, I assure you it's good. It's a good time. Uh, you get to eat breakfast pizza and and talk about uh, very interesting things. Um, let's see. Well, who else? Uh, Margaret. Um, uh, Margaret is is still still recovering. I think she still has pneumonia on one side, and um, is still needing some oxygen. Uh, she has an appointment with a pulmonologist on uh, in July, and uh, the the still the litmus test is still like if she can walk around the block without getting winded, she can come back to work. Um, she misses you all very much, and if you feel so inclined, uh, she loves visitors and getting cards, and uh, we can hook you up with her address in the office if you'd like to, to send her a card or something. Um, Jen Peterson. Um, some, some of you all may know Jen. Uh, she has a young, a young boy and, uh, and the young disciples, uh, Ethan. Uh, she trains horses, and um, unfortunately... Uh, was severely injured in a training accident uh, and um, has had to have some some staples and and some bones set but she's at home uh, recovering um, Dan Dan's wife Melinda and Becky has been uh, has been looking over for her looking over her and so like I just you know it'd be good to send Jen and, and Scott some some love. So if you'd like their address, please come and see me after, after church. Um, Jen was uh, sleeping when I tried to visit her, but um, I know she is, you know, it's a hard, it's a hard recovery ahead of her. So, okay. My friends, um, you know, there is uh, uh, a lot that's coming at us in the news, um, one of which was uh, the shooting in Vestavia Hills in Alabama. As I said in my pastoral letter to you, um, the bishop who ordained me was their former rector and um, has been checking in with their rector who is trying to get back from Greece where he's been on pilgrimage with some of the people in his, his congregation. And so I just continue to ask that we keep uh, the folks of St. Stephen's in your prayers along with all of those who are victims of violence. In the midst of this life, we are in death. We know this. And so it takes, it's, uh, it's good for us to celebrate when we can and to
to that end, I would like to know if there are any birthdays or anniversaries uh, that are coming up in the congregation this week. Don't be shy. It's just, who? Dan, come on down. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. Melinda is uh, ministering to Jen, as I said, but nonetheless, we will we'll pray for our friends. So if you uh, look in your uh, pews, you'll find the Red Book of Common Prayer, and let's turn to the marriage service. Yes, anniversary, right? Or birthday? 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 Okay. Birthday. Well, we can do my, both. My short pants. Your get, short pants. Get away with it. All right. Well, that takes us to a different part of the prayer book, my friends, and for Thanksgivings, which is in the back in the 800s, right? And we'll get there. You know, they got a prayer for everything in the Episcopal Church by the numbers. So if you get there, 830, Mary Jo, always there for me. All right, my friends, let us pray. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray on your servant Dan as he begins another year. Grant that he may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen his trust in your goodness all the days of his life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. All that and more, sir. We love you. Thank you. All right. Next week anniversary. Next week anniversary. Okay. You'll see him again. All right, my friends. Walk in love as Christ. Yes, ma'am. That's true. That's true. You know, um, I was kind of feeling down because my whole family's down at St. Crispin's and I'm just, I'm on deployment again. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. I join with you in, uh, in that love for our children and for our families. Thank you for reminding me of that, Debbie. All right. And now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself as a sacrifice to the living God.
My friends, please stand as you're able. Um, as it's the season after Pentecost, we'll be using Eucharistic Prayer A. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice. For the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who set us the solitary in families, we commend to thy continual care the homes in which thy people dwell. Put far from them, we beseech thee, every root of bitterness, the desire of vainglory, and the pride of life. Fill our fathers with faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, and godliness. Knit together in constant affection those who in holy wedlock have been made one flesh. Turn the hearts of the parents to the children and the hearts of the children to their parents. And so enkindle in us fervent charity among us all that we may evermore be kindly affectioned one to another through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.